2020 brought us our first real taste of Apple Silicon with the M1. It blew people away. 2021 brought the redesigned iMac and the MacBook Pro, giving our first glimpse of Apple's retro future design direction with plenty of nods to their historical designs, as well as the more extreme versions of the processors. In 2022, Apple Silicon goes into overdrive with basically everything getting updated and the end of Intel Macs. So let's talk about that. I'm Mike Cave David and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors every weekday, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell. And there is a channel update at the end of this video, so hold on tight for that. But there are three major blocks throughout the year where Apple can release or at least announce new Macs. The spring event, typically in March or April, June's WWDC, and the fall, meaning basically any time from September to November. We'll take these events one at a time and work our way through the year. First up, spring, because that's how seasons work. And the presumed date of the first event is March the 8th, putting the event announcement just over a week away, on March the 1st. Until recently, the only expected products were to be an updated iPhone SE 3rd generation and the iPad Air 5th generation, neither with new designs, but updated faster internals and potentially better cameras too. But last week, Apple filed three new devices with the EEC database, two desktops and one laptop. The desktops are both most likely to be the Mac Mini with both the M1 Pro and Max, both under one model number, and the first look at the M2 chip. M2 is expected to contain four efficiency and four performance CPU cores, along with 10 GPU cores, though eight to nine core binned graphics might well be available too at the entry level. Graphics, assuming they follow the same pattern as the iPhone 13's A15 SoC, that means that the M1 based on it will be dramatically better with the best performing A15s gaining up to 55% faster performance based on the previous year. But back to the Mac Mini, this is the one that we're expecting to see a new design with a flatter but similar footprint and moving the power supply from internal to an external power supply brick, just like the iMac. The M2 chip would also find its way into that laptop. But what laptop is it? Well, right now we have an M1 based MacBook Air, MacBook Pro and two MacBook Pros with the new M1 Pro and Max chips. That said, we have redesigned MacBook Pros in there and the next MacBook Air with M2 is rumored to be getting a redesign too, adding mini LED displays and a complete new look. To justify the also rumored increased price tag, that increased price might make people think that the M1 would hang around in the existing chassis at 999, but I don't see that happening. I'm expecting the new MacBook, as previously discussed, to be just that, the MacBook. Not Pro, not Air, but MacBook and taking the base 999 price point with M2. So if the M1 Air does stay around, that would remain on sale at at least a hundred dollar price cut. Now dropping the touch bar and keeping the LCD display should be enough to differentiate against the Air and the Pros in the lineup. So that's spring. Next, Dub Dub. June's WWDC is thought of as the Super Pro event of the year. It's always been the place where Mac Pros and iMac Pros have been released basically every time in the past decade. 2013, 2017 and 2019 have all seen an iMac Pro or an iMac announcement and equally those announcements have led to late in the year releases like December late. Will we be getting an iMac Pro? Well, I think the answer here is kind of. It sounds like we'll get the same M1 Pro and M1 Max chips as in the MacBook Pro in a 27 inch mini LED display, presumably with more Pro colorways than the somehow controversial iMacs, which I have to say I think look incredible in their new lighter colors. But as it's still an M1 Pro and M1 Max inside, it's probably not the power level that a lot of people are wanting from an iMac Pro. At the same time as that, I'm hoping that Apple will actually reserve the Pro name in their products from now on for the Macs that contain a Pro or Max SoC. It just makes sense to me. And that also then means that the 13 inch MacBook in spring with the M2 chip shouldn't be called a Pro. The Mac Pro, however, will be the real deal. Two or four M1 Max SoCs for a maximum of 40 CPU cores, 32 of those being performance cores and eight being efficiency cores in total with up to 128 graphics cores too. These things are gonna be insane, but perhaps don't expect to order them right away given Apple's track record. I mean. 
possibly rounding out this event, you might also get the M2 MacBook Air models as well, assuming that the production of mini LED displays has caught up with the demand. With those though, expect the same M2 chip inside as the Mac Mini and the MacBook, but in a thinner, fanless and flat design, with new colours, a notch, mini LED running at probably 60Hz, not the 120Hz ProMotion of the MacBooks Pro, but still beautiful computers and designed for style over power, I guess. That would realign the MacBook Air with where it used to be in the range as a premium, but not the workhorse as such. It's possible we also see the M2 iPad Pro there with a potential design update allowing MagSafe charging through a glass back. Also, the M2 iMac could be arriving as well in its 24-inch form, and possibly that chip could be available in the bigger chassis too by then. Because let's be honest, with the MacBook Pros, Apple is quite happy to give you the same chip in the 14 and the 16-inch size now, so why not 24 and 27-inch? Finally, the fall comes around with the usual iPhone, Apple Watch, and iPad boring updates. But if Apple can also catch up by then, we could see the M2 Pro and M2 Max SOCs going into MacBook Pros. There's really very little else needed in terms of updating these, so simply swapping out the SOC, just like when Intel chip bumps came along, should be almost trivial to the point that they could just be a press release. They don't even need stage time, although I'm sure Apple will afford this to them. So that's what I think we'll be getting in the new Macs in 2022, but what do you think? Thoughts down in the comments below, and, as usual, we'll get into your iCave answers. Thomas Rebenstein asks, iCave answers, I'm leaning more and more towards a new Mac Mini. Should a model with M1 Max be announced in the coming spring event? I have a question about this. My monitor has three connection options. HDMI, Thunderbolt 2 and DisplayPort. The expected Mac Mini will probably have Thunderbolt and HDMI, but no DisplayPort. Which connection gives the best results and is recommended? HDMI direct connection, Thunderbolt 4 to DisplayPort via an adapter, or Thunderbolt 4 to HDMI adapter. So, in all honesty with this, it depends what your display can do in terms of resolution as much as anything and refresh rate. If you're looking at 4K at 60Hz, HDMI to HDMI should be absolutely fine. Uh, if you are needing to get a uh, better refresh rates or better resolutions, then I would look at the Thunderbolt stuff. If you've only got Thunderbolt 2 going in, you might not have enough bandwidth anyway. HDMI is probably the way that I would go personally. Just make sure you get a decent quality cable because HDMI is one of those weird things where you can get worse results just by having a worse cable. And Arthur Swart asks, IK answers, why doesn't Apple use OLED to make MacBook screens? It seems there's plenty of production and they already use OLED in their iPhones and iPads. So for starters, they don't use OLED in any iPads. They only use them in the phones at the moment because the iPhones are about the right size for what you can do with uh, OLED at the minute and they're used in the right kind of ways. Now, what do I mean by that? There are not a huge amount of things that are persistent on the screen for long periods of time. So with OLED, there is an issue with burning. That basically means that each of the pixels has a certain kind of shelf life of how long it can be lit before it starts to deteriorate and not brighten up as much. That's my best understanding of it, but it means that if you've got certain elements on a, a display, like for example on a Mac, you've got a little apple in the top corner, you've got all of your uh, command center bits and bobs that go up at the top corner, and you've got your dock of course, and these are quite persistent things. Even if you've not got those, you will have uh, maximized windows, potentially, if you are using kind of full screen mode, and then you'll have the dots. Uh, there's there's a lot of stuff that is persistent on a Mac, and your screen stays on for a lot longer at a time than it does with your phone. So those are the big kind of issues. There's also uh, off-axis colors are not great. Uh, large panels have color shift across the panels, um, and that's that's a, a lot of the reason. Apple has looked at some different ways of doing OLED in a way that will kind of have the shelf life that it needs uh, and other things like that. But at the moment, the mini LED is ideal for the larger displays. It's just that the production isn't quite there yet. It won't take long. 
hopefully, and uh, then Apple can get on with things. They're experimenting with OLED, but I don't think that's what they want to use. It's just a necessity that they kind of have a look at it in the meantime. Hopefully that makes sense. And um, But yeah, iPads don't have OLED at this point in any version. So not quite sure where you've got that information from. And earlier in the video, I promised a bit of a channel update. It's not a, a massive thing, but we are going to kind of move away from having the very scheduled 1pm videos. We've had issues with getting those out, as you'll probably know from the last week or so. We got two out of five out, which is not good. I'm not happy with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out the videos when I can, um, whatever time I can, but I will still aim for five videos a week. Um, the main reason for this is different people in different time zones get to access it at different times anyway. So Yes, it's going to be awkward for some people, it's going to be helpful for others, and I'm going to try and vary it through the week. So any time that we have a premiere, I'm hoping that more people can see it. Um, and certainly throughout the week, different people can be at the premieres, and hopefully I can chat on a few of them. Because right now, it's really a struggle. Hopefully it will get better soon, but I can't promise anything just yet. So we're going to mitigate it. We're going to try it for a couple of weeks. If it's awful, we'll try and get back to the normal schedule. Thanks to the Patreons over here. If you want to join them, icavedave.com forward slash Patreon. My voice is on its way out. But thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.